Sim Update 10 for Microsoft Flight Simulator is due towards the end of August. And with it comes the prospect of improved performance through greater FPS via the inclusion of DLSS. If you're looking for a straightforward explanation avoiding the technical jargon and want to understand what it is, how it works and what are the basic settings, then this video is for you. Welcome to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. We'll come back to the deep learning part just now. Super Sampling is a graphics technique, in fact an anti-aliasing method, that smooths out the jagged edges in the image that's rendered. Any image that we're looking at is made up of thousands of different dots or pixels, and each pixel can only have one color. So when we get a lower resolution image and we zoom in, we can see the jagged edges. Super sampling is a method to smooth out those edges, thus creating a better image overall. The lower the resolution of a particular image, the less number of pixels are required. And so our GPUs and CPUs have less to compute and the faster the frame rate we get. But of course that increased frame rate is at the expense of the quality of the graphics. And this is where DLSS comes in. Its primary function is to boost frame rates by rendering those frames at a lower resolution. And thus it can do it faster. And then using deep learning or AI, upscale the frames back to the native resolution, with minimal loss of graphics fidelity depending on the mode chosen. Microsoft Flight Simulator will be using the second generation of DLSS and it has four different modes which we'll cover later on and allows you to prioritize either detail or FPS. Let's have a look at it this way. You're using Microsoft Flight Simulator in 4K. Your graphics card is doing a whole lot of maths to project that image on screen in 4K. What DLSS does, as an example, it will render that at 1440p which means the GPU can render that image faster and then it will upscale it back to the native resolution or desired resolution of 4K. Instead of using the traditional methods, it'll use AI trained super sampling to upgrade the image, providing you with a 4K or close to 4K image, but at a faster speed, thus more FPS. The traditional methods of super sampling, however, would not provide a good enough image. And this is where the deep learning side comes in. NVIDIA will have a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And using its AI housed on a supercomputer, it will be taking thousands of ultra high res and low res pictures, and then computing the best path between the low res to upscale it to the high res pictures with the least possible impact. The more it does, the more it learns and the better the upscaled image gets. From this, it's able to deduce the best parameters to use to achieve the best picture or image. These routes to upscaling are not for each possible frame within Microsoft Flight Simulator. That would be next to impossible, but it will draw up parameters for internal, external views and so on. This information is then fed through to us through various driver updates. And this is why DLSS is only going to be available to those using RTX graphics cards, because it requires the use of the Tensor cores. So you will require either an RTX 2000 or RTX 3000 series or above graphics card to take advantage of DLSS. With those on the 3000 series, RTX graphics cards getting a better performance because they're using third gen Tensor cores capable of more matrix calculations, and they're faster. AMD's FSR, or in particular FSR 2.0, is their equivalent to DLSS. Although it operates on a similar line for computing the upscaled image, it uses an algorithm to achieve similar results. AMD's FSR 1.0 will be included in the August SIM Update 10, with FSR 2.0 promised at a later date. If you're running Microsoft Flight Simulator at 60 or 70 frames per second in 4K, with all settings on Ultra, with no stutters or micro pauses, well then you won't need DLSS. But for those of us whose hardware is not capable of achieving that, DLSS offers us four different modes. And these modes are going to be available under DLSS in Microsoft Flight Simulator graphic settings. They are Quality, Balanced, Performance, and ultra performance modes. 
Let's just touch on these and understand the different modes and what they aim to achieve, so that when it's available, you'll be able to make an informed choice. Also, I note there's a whole load of different videos out there showing different performances under the SimUpdate 10 beta. Some of these are not very helpful. Yes, they may be showing you what mode they're in, performance, quality or whatever, but are they upscaling to 1080p, 1440p or 4K? That information is critical in order to judge performance. Generally speaking, because there's more pixels to work with, DLSS will operate better as you upscale to a higher resolution. The different modes within DLSS is a video in itself, so I'm going to keep this section relatively short and to the point. For those technophobes out there, yes I am generalizing in certain instances. And I think it's important and critical to understand that each individual's mileage may vary with DLSS, as it will be very much dependent on your hardware configuration and in particular what graphics processing unit or graphics card you're using. Please bear that in mind. Providing you have an RTX graphics card, DLSS will work with either Windows 10 or Windows 11, and it'll work with both DX11 and DX12. Let's start with the quality mode. This will be the most demanding one of all, as it has an upscaler of approximately times 2 so it will have the least impact on quality degradation, but also provide the smallest improvement in terms of FPS. It is likely but not certain that those with the top-end graphics cards will find the best balance between visual fidelity and FPS with this setting. But again, I must temper this. It depends on what your graphics settings are within Microsoft Flight Simulator itself. The balance mode seeks to find a middle ground between FPS and graphics quality. Many of those wanting a final resolution of 4K will probably find comfort here. The upscaling factor here is circa 3. Our third choice is the performance mode, with an upscale of circa 4. And many looking to use a final resolution of 1440p may find this is one of the best settings for them. And for those with any slower or aging systems, you may find that this helps you play at a res you weren't able to achieve before. However, there is a trade-off in performance mode in terms of the graphical representation overall. And lastly, there's Ultra Performance Mode. And this mode seeks to lower the barriers for entry into the higher resolutions. But it has an upscaling factor of, I think, 8 or 9. Not totally sure. So in theory, you could be at 720p and upscale to 4K or above. You'll probably get a playable FPS at that, but you'll be paying a considerable penalty in terms of graphics. DLSS is a welcome addition to Microsoft Flight Simulator, and in particular those on PC, as Microsoft Flight Simulator have raised the bar in terms of graphics for a flight simulation, and now it seeks to do the same in terms of performance. And of course the good news is DLSS will apply whether you're in VR or screen mode. DLSS does come with its compromises, and finding the right setting for you, well, it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. Select a mode that puts you more or less where you are, but at a higher FPS. And once that's achieved, well, you can up those settings. Or you may be able to change the resolution, keeping your settings where they are. And depending on your system, well, maybe you can do both. I hope you found this useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves, I'll see you all again very soon, and bye for now.